Okay, we're now going to build the uh, electronic parts of the moth trap. And if you look at the bits that we've got, what we have here is the lamp holder. We also have the lamp. We've used for a little bit of red wire, I'll show you what we're going to do with that in a minute. And we have a little thing called the boost buck regulator. This is what uh, provides the correct voltage to drive the lamp. And we have a little dawn dusk sensor as well. And over here we have a battery holder and the suitable connector to connect the battery to the power input of our boost back regulator and also we have a few little bits of velcro that we're going to use to stick everything into position and the very final thing that we have is a little scrap of the pet g from earlier and we need a little rectangle on which we're going to mount the components. Now the reason we stick these components, the electronic boards, onto the plastic is that if anything goes wrong, we want to be able to get at the wires to rewire it so easily. So just using a pair of scissors, I shall cut myself a little square, about 60 millimeter by 70 millimeter. This is described in the, uh, in the book. And so now we've got ourselves a crude but effective a little um, mounting plate. Now, these circuit boards, this particular type of boost back regulator, I've soldered the wires on uh, earlier. Now, if you don't like soldering, you can, for a more expensive price, buy the same device but with the terminal blocks already in place. And if you use these, you don't need to do any soldering. So let's stick these circuit boards into position now. Now I know some engineers will be looking in horror at the idea of using Velcro to stick the circuit boards into position, but this is not rocket science. It's a very, very cheap way to stick everything in position. And at the end of the day, it is only a moth trap. So now we take the dawn dusk sensor and we stick that in position. Okay, so now we're going to start to wire this up. We take the short little red wire and twist it together with the red wire coming out of the boost button regulator, like so. And we loosen the two connectors for the input here and to, on this terminal block and sometimes it's a good idea just to poke the screwdriver in to make sure it's fully open because sometimes these uh, things have been tightened up for a long time and they're a bit stiff so if we now poke the wire into the terminal block and then screw it down tight with a small screwdriver and now we take the black wire from the lamp holder and twist that together with the black wire from the boost buck regulator and then we push the black wire in this white wire is the light sensor you can remove it i like leaving it on because the wire and the sensor are actually quite fragile uh, it's probably safer leaving it on. Okay, we've got those two nicely screwed together now. And now we take the red wire, the spare red wire, loop that round, and it's going to go in the terminal block hole nearest to me. Push that, and make sure it's open. Push it. Ooh, didn't quite get that right. Try again. Push it in, that's it, got it in. Now tighten it up. 
little pull, make sure it's in. Okay, and now the last connection. And so this is shown very clearly in the book how to wire this up. Now the type of batteries you use are quite important. They must be this high capacity batteries. There is a lot of energy in these. If they short out together, they will cause a fire. So when not in use, make sure you put them back in a little plastic box. Okay, so now we've got our battery pack ready. We have, again, our connector wire. We plug this in. Okay, we're now ready for the moment in truth. We should see a little red light when I plug this in. And we have a little red light. And when I cover the sensor, we should get a little blue light. So that proves that the unit is working. Now the bulbs have a right and a wrong way. So they're not like ordinary bulbs, they have to go in the right way round and there is no marking on the outside to tell you which way round they go. So you've got to carefully insert them in the socket and if they don't work, you put them in the other way. That didn't work. So now we put it round the other way and of course, it's not working. <laughs> now there it is, it's, it's working, I hadn't quite pushed it home far enough. So there is the electrics for a moth trap working and the final thing that we're going to do, we just unplug it and we're going to put a little bit of sticky uh, velcro on the underside of this little board so that we can stick it inside the trap. And the very last thing that we need to do is I uh, need to do some filing. And what we need to do is file two little grooves in the plastic box to let the wire out. So I always do it in the corner. Um, two. Now we can stick this in here and when we're using the moth trap we can put the lid on and let the wires out like this and when we're packing it away we can carefully roll all the wires up and put them inside a little box for safe traveling and then for our batteries here what we're going to do, we only need one slot in this pack. And again, when the battery, that will let the leads out when it's in use. And now we can carefully roll this up and put the lid on. And there it is, our batteries and our electronics for our moth trap.